Howdy everyone! My name is Andrew Talind and I'm a mechanical engineer in training here with Clear Rush Co. And in this video we're going to be learning a little bit about the use of air intake flame arresters in the oil and gas industry. So let's not waste any time and let's go take a look at one right now. All right, so here we are in the shop and we have a, one of our larger flame arresters in front of us. Now an air intake flame arrestor is really an important safety device for any gas burning appliance on an oil and gas facility. This device right here stops the flame from entering into an atmosphere where combustible gases may be present in order to prevent explosions, burns, or other hazards from occurring. As you can see here, these flame arresters are built typically from crimped or corrugated aluminum ribbon that's rolled into a cell. Depending on the application, however, some arresters are made with screens, perforated plates, or things with slots that are usually enclosed in a frame or housing of sorts. There's really a wide variety of applications where one of these might be used. Things like line heaters, reboilers, dehys, or enclosed vapor combustors all require a flame arrestor in order to operate safely. The flame cell's role is to create a bridge between the protected and unprotected side of our system. So here we are with the flame arrestor bolted to a burner on a fire tube application. And as we can see here, the unprotected side of our system is gonna be the inside of this burner where we have a stable and continuous flame. On the protected side of our system, however, we have air that's being drawn into this burner in order to provide oxygen to our flame inside. In most cases, the protected side of our system is going to be the area where operators, maintenance workers, or well site workers are going to be present during normal operation of the equipment. So it's really important that this entire area remains safe to work in. At an oil and gas facility, there's a lot of piping and other equipment that can contain methane or other hydrocarbon gases. Things like regulators, valves, any sort of fittings, they all have the potential to leak and some of them actually vent gas under normal operating conditions, which can be a real safety concern if we have a gas plume building where workers are going to be present. Unfortunately, we can't change the fact that our burner still requires oxygen in order to stay lit. This means there's going to be a constant airflow through our flame arrestor towards our flame. Depending on the concentration of gas, however, that's present in the air, it's very likely that that gas plume is going to be drawn through our flame cell into our burner, and this can cause a spontaneous ignition in the form of an explosion that's going to cause a flashback to move back towards our flame cell and toward the protected side of our system. Once a flashback has occurred, the flame arrestor has two really important jobs. Firstly, the small openings or channels in our flame cell need to be able to slow the speed of the flame front as best as possible. Secondly, our entire flame cell needs to absorb as much heat as possible from that flame front in order to extinguish the flame before it ever reaches the protected side of our system. This flame has been specifically designed to slow a flame and remove heat faster than the flame can generate heat through the natural combustion process. Unfortunately, there's a lack of industry-wide performance and design standards for the construction of air intake flame arresters. The American Petroleum Institute has proposed a method of conducting routine testing on these type of field installed flame arresters. This test involves leaking a small amount of propane gas directly through our flame arrestor from the protected side of our system toward the combustion source. If any flame can burn back through our flame arrestor or leak out through one of our seals on our housing, this flame arrestor needs to be replaced and a suitable one needs to be brought in. This method really does a great job of determining how that flame cell is gonna perform under normal operation, but it is unfortunately not intended to test the ability of our flame cell in the event of a flashback. Okay, so what are we gonna need in order to perform one of these API tests? Well, first thing we need is a propane supply. So here we have a propane supply regulated down to 15 PSI of pressure, connected to a flexible hose, which is connected to our wand. 
And this wand here, it's 10 feet long. This is gonna be used to leak that small amount of propane gas around our flame arrestor in a safe manner. So here we have our 10 foot long wand. Hooked onto here we have our propane supply through a flexible hose and a ball valve that we can use to turn off and on the gas as needed. So the other thing to keep in mind is when performing this test, we need this area to be free of combustible gases and any operators in the area need to be notified that you're conducting this test in order to remain safe. The other thing to keep in mind is to always have an extra guy handy, ready with a fire extinguisher in the event that something goes wrong. So let's dive right in and try this test out. So since the API test can only tell us so much about the flame arrestor's ability to perform under normal operating conditions, the test apparatus that we have today is specifically designed to tell us how a flame arrestor will perform in a flashback scenario. So here we have one of our 16 inch flame cells mounted to this fire tube. And this fire tube is used to simulate the protected side of our system, an area where workers are gonna be present during day to day. This setup also uses our ACL 4000 flare stack igniter, and this is hooked up to a propane supply that's regulated down to 15 PSI. When we leak a small amount of propane in here and subsequently ignite it, we're gonna cause a fireball to be accelerated down this two inch pipe, striking our flame cell. What we're also able to do with this test setup is simulate a gas leak on site. And that's done here through this small fitting that's connected to our fire tube and a propane supply. If the flame arrestor is unable to cool and extinguish the flame caused by our shot tube igniter, we should be able to see an explosion inside through one of our sight ports. So let's get testing. As we can see from inside the fire tube, there was no visible explosion, which means that the flame was cooled and extinguished before reaching the inside of the fire tube, and that failed to ignite the gas vapor inside. So this is a good indication of an excellent past test. So now that we've seen our flame cell getting tested, it begs the question, are there any other alternatives to a full-size flame arrestor? Well, in some particular applications like small gas engines or even pilot systems, a stainless steel mesh like those found in front of me, like this, or even a screen of sorts, is in fact a suitable means of preventing a flame from entering into a protected area. Now, this working principle is much the same. We have heat from our flame that's being absorbed by our mesh material and extinguishing our flame before it reaches our protected area. But let's see how this mesh performs at a small scale first. So as we can see here, the flame is in fact extinguished upon contact with the mesh. The mesh itself, the material in there is absorbing the heat from our flame and preventing that flame from passing through any further. 
Let's see how this same mesh performs on our test rig once we get a little bit more velocity behind that flame. So let's place three layers of this stainless steel mesh in our test rig and see if it performs the same as it did in our small scale test. So as we were able to see there, the mesh couldn't extinguish the flame as it was passing into the fire tube. As the flame entered the fire tube, there was enough heat left in that flame which resulted in our gas plume igniting as well. In this test, we only had a small amount of gas paper present in the fire tube, but in a scenario with a higher concentration of gas, the resulting explosion would be much larger and potentially harmful to any workers present on site. These two tests help us understand a few very important things. Really, the performance of a flame cell is determined by two specific factors. Number one being the size of opening in the aluminum ribbon, and number two being the overall thickness of the cell that the flame must travel through. A flame cell that, is a, that has larger openings will allow more air to pass through but will also allow for a flame to travel more easily and more quickly through that cell. Similarly, a flame cell that is thicker will have more exposure to the flame as it tries to travel through it. A slower moving flame that is in contact with the cell for a longer period of time will have more opportunity to be cooled and extinguished before it reaches the protected side. The most important takeaway is that flame arresters are an intrinsically safe piece of equipment that must be installed properly on any gas-fired appliance that is found in the oil and gas sector. There really is no substitute for a well-designed and well-tested flame arrester. The safety of everyone on site depends on them working properly. <laughs>